So welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for being here and not in with us talk. And <laughs> we really appreciate that. And uh, we're going to, Carlos and me, we're going to uh, give this talk. Uh, it's uh, called Max, uh, Real-Time Messaging and Activity Stream Engine. Uh, I'm Victor. I'm a sen senior Python developer and IT architect at UPC NIT. Uh, I'm a Plone Foundation member and I'm Plone Core developer since uh, 2010. And I'm also author of our uh, book uh, that it's called Plum 3 Internet, which was published in 2010 by Backfoo. Uh, hello, and I'm, I'm Carlos. Uh, I'm a Python and, and a JavaScript uh, developer. And I'm working with Python for the last eight, eight years, and just because this project, also occasionally with Erlang. And also I'm a... The, the kind of guy everyone asks for reg expressions. Uh, and with Victor, we've, we've been doing uh, websites with, with Plone in the UPC net. That is uh, a private company that is owned by the Universitat Politecnica Catalunya, Barcelona Tech. And uh, we have uh, more than uh, four, uh, 400 sites uh, in plan running in the university, and in the last four years, we also make some projects uh, with uh, Pyramid. Okay, so uh, against all odds, we wanted to do a demo, and I don't think we are able to do that because the, <laughs> the Wi-Fi is uh, a little bit crappy, but how we, however, we tried to do that. So let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, here. So, uh, we wanted to do that because, uh, of course, uh, an image is, is worth a while, 1,000 words, and if it's not working right now, maybe we're going to, to yeah, to only show, come on. Okay, maybe we're giving up on that, so, and we will, oh, almost there. Come on. <laughs> so we basically wanted to show you the stream, which is the basic UI impl implementation. Why is doing that? Um, hello? Hello? Oh, okay. So we're the, we have this stream. That is the central part of here, which is the, the what I, as I said, is the UI implementation of Max, uh, and uh, in which we can we can uh, post things uh, like like this. So, uh, hello everybody, and and then uh, the post get get registered. And right now, Carlos has also sent me a real time message, which I I, I can see it there like in a, in a real-time notification, and I, now if I go to that view, then I see that me, uh, Carlos had, uh, has already sent me that message, and I can uh, reply to him, right, like this. So this is basically what we've done. These are uh, uh, the, the two main parts, uh, main features of, of Max, uh, and, and we just wanted to show you. So let's back to the presentation. So, uh, a little bit of history about Max. Uh, we've uh, initially uh, designed Max, uh, being the fact that we wanted uh, we, had, we we wanted to implement some kind of social internet, which is a concept that is uh, nowadays is uh, very trendy uh, for the university itself. And uh, we, we initially designed it that key feature that uh, the, the internet should have, like what, which is the, the, uh, the streaming uh, uh, engine. And, and, and uh, after that, we, we also uh, added the, the, the messaging uh, uh, feature as well. And today, Max is used uh, by, uh, by more than 30 
thousand students and eight thousand uh, university staff, and it's integrating mainly on the online campus of the university and also in the institutional collaboration tools used by the university staff. <clears throat> Basically, what is Max? So you already seen it. It's it's an it's an engine. Uh, you've seen the UI, but basically, is 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 a RESTful API. Uh, with we almost have a uh, uh, hundred endpoints, and has these two main features. It's a multi-source user and uh, application uh, activity stream because we, we uh, it not only it's it's capable of of receiving uh, activity from users, but also from uh, applications. Uh, and we can impersonate applications uh, by talking in the mouth of the users too also, and we can, we can uh, do th uh, that kind of things. And then we have the asynchronous messaging and, and uh, conversations feature, we, we already seen it, and it's all uh, GPL licensed. So how we came to, to, that, uh, to that concept, to the concept that, uh, that they use in Max, we, we had a lot of, of forums in the university, even in the online campus and in the internet also, and we wanted to modernize uh, the user experience uh, for that forum. So we thought that maybe we can uh, reuse some of the uh, concepts of the forums in special from topics because you are if you are a user you are interested in a special topics but you always have to go to the website and and check that topics and, and we wanted that that the information came uh, from a, a modern point of view to the user so uh, we basically introduce the concept of a context so in Max, we uh, basically is the way that you we we uh, hello <laughs> well uh, it's back okay so in Max we have uh, context which are, are mapped directly to topics to the old topics which are uh, the, the main features that they have, uh, they are related to a unique URI. Uh, URI. Uh, so we can uh, map it to virt virtually any, any page, uh, even if it's not uh, uh, related to Max directly. But uh, in, in this context, uh, we can aggregate posts, uh, posts that have social features like commenting or, or likes or, or, or uh, fa uh, f uh, the favorite uh, feature. And we added also the concept of, of subscription. So I can subscribe myself or, or someone can subscribe uh, me to a context and, can, uh, uh, and, and this person can give me, uh, can grant me some, some, uh, some permissions that it allows me to interact me with the context in, in different ways. So we have uh, the subscription, uh, the, the context uh, that is mapped to the topic. So I can, as a user, I can subscribe myself to uh, all the context that, that, that I, I wanted. So what are the other features of the context? As I said, they, they is identified by unique URI, URIs. And uh, we can uh, assign permissions per context, which, uh, it are basically now we have these eight permissions, which allows us to to model different kind of of context based on on, on that permissions, and uh, that gives us almost six thousand kind of context, which is a pretty useful uh, useless fact. However, and we we can also overwrite uh, the granular the, the the permissions of the user. Uh, in a granular way, uh, because we, we are able to grant or revoke a, a specific permissions per user for allowing users to do more than the, the context does. So what are the real, real life examples for that? For example, we have uh, now two, these two scenarios where we have uh, the community sites and the online campus. In the community sites, this kind of, uh, as I said, the uh, internet, social internet uh, at the university where well, we have a, a lot of communities which are directly mapped to one context, uh, which can have any of these, like institutional events or institutional news or uh, 
and in the online campus, we uh, have all the subjects uh, that are mapped to each, uh, each one to, to a context. Uh, in the community side, we decided to have these three community types just to show you what uh, we can do. And uh, we have the open communities where everyone can join and can live at will. We have uh, the closed communities where the owner should, should invite me in order to join, but I can leave also uh, whatever I want. And uh, the institutional uh, community type with, where, where, where the site admin decides who subscribes, but no one can leave. This, this is the, the uh, example of the institutional news or of institutional events where I want that everyone uh, be subscribed, but nobody leaves. As a summary of, of features, uh, we have the activity stream. You already seen it. It, uh, it stores uh, activity from user applications, and we have that social uh, uh, feature too, like comments, likes, favorites, and we also have support for uh, attaching images and files. The uh, conversations feature is, al is almost the same uh, because, in, in kind of way, are, are, are sharing some of the uh, basic features of the activity stream. Now, uh, later, Carlos will, will show you. And we basically uh, allows us to have one to one to -one conversations and group conversations as well. And it supports also images and files. <clears throat> then we have the JavaScript uh, UI widget, which you've already seen. Uh, it's the reference implementation of the, of the UI attacking the, the API. And uh, you can use it uh, as example for implementing your, your own uh, UI, if, if, you, if you wish. So we also have uh, the notifica notification engine for the real-time uh, features that it's platform-specific, push notifications for Apple and Google. And also, these allow us to have kind of internal notifications too, which we are exploring uh, right now that we, we, are, we want to be able to send notifications, for example, to the desktop, to the users, not related with the uh, real-time messaging, but also for other information that the, the uh, user could have. We also have an external source aggregation. We are currently uh, monitoring uh, Twitter, hashtags in Twitter, which we can uh, push it uh, inside the stream also. As a, also a key feature that we, we are able to deploy uh, Max on-premises or whatever we want, uh, and this address uh, some security concerns that we could have if, if uh, we are using a, a more uh, popular uh, tool like, uh, let's, see, let, let's say, uh, WhatsApp or, or iMessage or, or things like that. And if you are worried about uh, data privacy and ownership, uh, we provide a way to have a, like a corporate WhatsApp or corporate iMessage, so it's, it's also a good feature. And this is the, the summary of them. Okay, I will try to, to explain you a, a little bit some of the components that uh, we will uh, to make this, this possible. Um, we, we have kind of three different kind of components. Uh, on the left, you can see the, the components that are the, the ones that have the, a user interface the ones that the user uh, really uses and, and sees, which are the mobile apps and the, the integrations that we have done with other systems like Clone and Moodle, and the, uh, the JavaScript widget that it can virtually put, uh, be been put anywhere. Uh, in the center, in, in red, uh, there are the, the main software uh, that we developed to, to do this. Uh, we, will, we will go through some details about it. And at the right, uh, some of the well-known software uh, products that we used as the, more the, the back-end side of, of, the, of Max. Uh, to start, um, what we call OSIRIS is an, uh, an implementation of a OAuth2 uh, server, to, uh, sorry, <laughs> OAuth2 server implementation. Uh, this is built uh, on top of Pyramid, 
Uh, this is a very simple implementation. We only support uh, the, what is called the re resource owner creations flow because uh, as we only are using UAuth from uh, trusted systems, uh, we don't have the need of the more complex flows of OAuth uh, for identifying and giving permission over, over resources. So as the systems where we're using this uh, are trusted by the, the final user, uh, it's, the, it's that system that provides the, the needed credentials to obtain the tokens and, and do the validations. Uh, we're using MongoDB, both in, in Osiris and, and in the API for storage. And one of the reasons that we developed of, of uh, our own system is because we know that we, we will have um, some clients that have a, a specific uh, user directory uh, systems or single sign-on systems, and we wanted some flexibility to, um, to adapt to, to those clients. So uh, we made uh, OCDs pluggable, so each client uh, can get its own plugin to, to adapt to its uh, its features, but we have a, a base LDAP implementation and we offer also an LDAP service to our clients if, if they not already have a directory service. Um, Max, Max is the API part. Uh, it's also built on top of Pyramid. And why we use Pyramid? Uh, we were using Pyramid for the last four years. We know pretty well what uh, features it have, and it, it fitted well with what we wanted to achieve with uh, this API. Uh, I will not go in deep about all the endpoints that uh, we developed on Max, only a few of the implementation details that we, we used. Uh, for example, uh, on the routing of the of the all the endpoints that exist in Max, uh, we use a um, we have a centralized uh, place in the code when we define all the, the uh, URLs of, of all the endpoints. And this is used by Pyramid to actually define the, the routing and we use it uh, to generate um, automatic documentation based on, on doc strings of the, on each implementation of, the, of each endpoint. And we also use uh, this traverse, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a combined way of routing uh, that using URL dispatch uh, for reaching the URL and traverse, uh, traversal to, uh, to retrieve uh, the object that is the, the object referenced by this endpoint. So uh, once we enter in the, in the definition, in the actual code of, the, of that endpoint, we already have all the initialization, authorization, and authentication done. And so the, the real code of each endpoint is very simple and, and very short. Uh, we also used a feature of Pyramid key that is called Twins. Uh, Twins is, uh, is actually a decorator, uh, but is managed by Pyramid, so you can, you can define uh, a lot of Twins and you can define uh, in which order the twins are executed. And basically, you can perform tasks before and after uh, a request uh, enters uh, the system. So you can uh, modify the, the, re the re request that has arrived and modify the, the response that will, that will be shown to the user. Uh, as an example, um, one of the twins that we've, we have implemented uh, is uh, a check that is done on a special value on a header that we are using um, because we thought that in maybe in some, in some point in time we would reach a point that we, we're, um, we, we, we will have uh, no option that makes some um, um, breaking change in the API. So all the mobile applications that we have distributed across all the uh, client uh, devices will be broken. So uh, the mobile devices and the a API server uh, agreed in, a, in, a, in this value that it's, it's a, just an, an integral number that we are incrementing over time. 
and each request is checked uh, on this on this number. So if we have to make a, a breaking change, we just uh, uh, increment that number, and then uh, mobile apps know that a change has been made and that probably a new uh, version of the application is ready, and it tells the user to upgrade the app. So we have a control uh, about this scenario, but we try not to make that kind of changes. It's just in case we have no other option. And the last thing about Max is how we implemented the exception handling. Uh, we wanted a unified way to show the uh, errors to the, both to the final user that is using the API um, and, uh, and a way to catch possible uh, unhandled exceptions and bugs that occur in the system. So what we've done is that every known exception that we have in our code is raised as a custom exception, and then this is handled by, by Pyramid, uh, catching the exception and rendering a, a customized uh, JSON message for each kind of, of error. And for non-handled exceptions, uh, we, uh, record the traceback of the error, we record the, the information that was in the, in the request, and we built a, a little uh, user interface to be able to inspect that uh, debug information and quickly act uh, on possible bugs without having to, to deal on, on contacting the user, trying to reproduce the error, etc. Um, on the real-time messaging part, uh, we have used Rabbit MQ. Uh, is it, is it, this is really the, the third attempt that we made uh, while we were um, exploring different possibilities. First, we tried um, with Pyramid and uh, Socket.io. Then we tried with Node.js and, and Socket.io too. And finally, we discovered uh, one of the plugins that come with RabbitMQ that is a, a storm with a WebSockets plugin. I don't know if anyone had heard, about, heard about it. Um, what, we, what we can achieve with this, uh, and also with the unique routing features that has uh, RabbitMQ, is that we can, we can directly map um, a, a client that connects it to the system to the internal uh, Kiwi and Exchange uh, system of Rabbit, of Rabbit MQ. And also we have developed uh, an Erlang plugin for uh, Rabbit MQ to connect with, uh, with our OAuth authentication. Uh, this is a, a diagram of what we've implemented to, to route the messages. Uh, one feature that we are very proud is that uh, the, the structure of, of, this, of, of this design holds the, the security of uh, what user, uh, where users can read and write from. So um, each, of the, each of the exchanges that you see here are connected by some Bindix that are maintained by the API calls. So any, any time a subscription, a subscription is made, the correct bindings for each user are uh, populated, and so a message can only go through the system if that binding ex exists. So the security is implicit in the, in the design of the, of the bindings. We also developed a, a kind of protocol message that is what messages inside RabbitMQ uh, contain. Uh, and that message uh, is, is designed to be packed and unpacked to uh, use the, the minimum size possible. So we have a kind of a specification to unpack these messages based on uh, static values that we know. So we can go from this human readable format to this NERT readable format. So it's not unreadable, but it's easily debuggable. We have to plug in and, and see some of this message. Uh, and finally, this is uh, the Max Bunny component that is the, the Kiwi consumer. 
is a multi-process uh, Kiwi consumer, so we can um, start many, many consumers for each of the types we have uh, developed, and is uh, in charge of taking the messages and doing the appropriate task for each message to, to fill in the APIs and, and so on. And that MaxBunny component uses a, a, what we call Max Client, is a Python wrapper for the REST API that uh, wraps the, all the functionality from the API. And this is what is used uh, to, from MaxBunny to call the, the API. Uh, I will skip this. Uh, we also developed a special version of the Max Client that is the Whiskey I Max Client which is uh, a way to, from the client, execute all the code base from Max using a special uh, fake WSGI server. So we can make a, a, a request in the same way that is done by the real API, but without using the real servers. And at last, uh, the Twitter uh, external aggregation uh, is well, already explained by Victor. So, uh, I want to show you now uh, the current integrations, which you already seen in the demo, which is the site of communities, which is this uh, social internet. Uh, we have the Moodle inter integration, which is a uh, Julian, which we call the Ulearn campus, and also the iOS and Android apps. So this is you already saw it, the social internet with the key. Uh, the the uh, JavaScript widget in the middle. This is the Moodle site, or one of them, because the, we have a lot of themes of, of uh, also, and uh, with the integration of the of the uh, stream here, which allows the students and the teachers to have a, a very tight communication, uh, even with the stream and with the conversation part. These are the, uh, the, this is a, uh, the iOS uh, app, and this is the Android one. So they basically have the same, the same uh, functionalities. And potential integrations, uh, almost uh, virtually uh, whatever you are thinking of. Uh, we are also thinking in uh, put the stream also on ERPs or in uh, I don't know, uh, any, any uh, HTTP uh, web, uh, web app that uh, you are thinking about because of the JavaScript. You can put the JavaScript with uh, very little effort and make it work with Max anywhere. And uh, we're already exploring that, yeah, as I said, with, with maybe putting in our ERP or something like that. <clears throat> Which list? We have a huge uh, list of uh, to-dos because uh, there is so much to do. Uh, we uh, wanted to add social integrations uh, like follow, like a Twitter-ish uh, uh, feature, or, or the share, like the Facebook one, or the G plus one. And, uh, we definitely have to finish and polish the documentation. Maybe explore the utilization of each uh, little service and, and then make it a real microservice. Uh, exploring also some other kinds of uh, cache uh, like Redis or we also wanted to port it to Python 3 because we are using 2.7 right now and uh, maybe uh, use also Async.io and uh, improve our our uh, API by adding uh, some JSON-LD or, or uh, hyperlink technologies there, and of course, adding uh, some kind of end-to-end -end encryption, which is a very tough one, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's on the list. And so, uh, we are here also because we also want to explore if we can uh, build a community around Max. We are very, uh, let's say, uh, happy and proud of, of what we've done, and uh, we know that there is a lot of uh, things uh, of, of improvement, but we also definitely we want to explore what if we can do community around it, and uh, please contact us if you are interested or you find it uh, interesting, and pull requests are welcome. Uh, this is uh, the, the resources where you can go and take a look at it. 
Uh, the first one is the documentation one, and the other ones are the repos, the GitHub repos of uh, Max. So uh, thank you. And, uh, thank you very much. Do you have any questions from the audience? So um, you said you tried several technologies uh, besides RabbitMQ when you were choosing it. I'm interested in knowing which ones, and if, especially if you took a look at MQP 1.0 as a protocol to use. Uh, can you repeat the final part of the question? I'm curious. So I'm interested in knowing what technologies you guys looked at instead of RabbitMQ, and I'm especially interested in knowing if you guys take, took a look at AMQP 1.0 as a protocol to use rather than RabbitMQ with 0.9. I think I already said it. Uh, we used uh, uh, Pyramid with uh, Socket.io. Uh, the, the first two approaches with, were without uh, thinking in a, in a Kiwi broker in, inside the, the system. But uh, we, we realized that we, we couldn't achieve uh, a, re a real, real time with a lot of load with uh, a system like RabbitMQ uh, in behind. So RabbitMQ is using EAMQ, but uh, we are uh, using some of the um, extensions that RabbitMQ are, uh, has, has done over the, the standard protocol. So we are a little tied to, this, to these features. More questions? No more. And let's thank the speakers again then. Thank you.